asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. I'm really glad that she's agreed to come on the programme. Uh, some of our long-term listeners were in touch with me recently to say, do give her a shout, Richie. Um, she's um, talking about some very, very important and very interesting things. Well, my next guest, my only guest this evening, is calling for a mass action campaign against the rollout of 5G technology here in the UK. This campaign begins on Thursday and will continue throughout March. Now, I have put links to it on our Facebook page. Go to uh, the Richie Allen Show Facebook page. It's a real change campaign, mass action campaign against 5G. I will tweet out links to it uh, as well. Uh, I'm also going to send uh, a link or put a link out to her website, which is www.vigile.org. I'll spell that later on. I'm delighted to be joined this evening by Anne Marie Carey. As I mentioned earlier, prefers to be called Annie. Annie, welcome to uh, our show. How are you? Hi Richie, thanks for inviting us along. Can you hear me all right? I'm hearing you loud and clear and thanks for your patience. We were supposed to be speaking about 10 minutes ago but I um, kind of got kind of got behind there but we've got plenty of time Annie. Thanks for coming on. I can hear you loud and clear. This is an area that um, I'm very very interested in and I have chatted with, with one or two people on the programme. People you'll know of course about this in, in recent times. Annie, do you want to first of all give our listeners a, a kind of an idea, a kind of a definition of 5G? What is 5G? What does it mean? Right. Um, I think people are under the misapprehension that it's just the next generation on from uh, what we've actually been used to, which is uh, three, third, three, third and fourth generation technology. Um, but it's actually... It's nothing of the sort. 5G technology, um, it operates at, at different wavelengths. It uses millimetre wavelengths. It's been um, shown to prove, and sorry, to be dangerous to health and um, not just our health, but uh, the environment and uh, wildlife. Uh, so basically what we're trying to do with this campaign is to bring people's attention to what 5G actually is and what it isn't so that people can make an informed decision um, and not just be just have this technology forced upon them um, by governments. And so with that, we've brought this uh, campaign. Now, I'm just like many other people, uh, a concerned citizen, you know, about the dangers of, of this technology. And the media and the government, basically, the aid, government agencies are just like salespeople for this dangerous technology. They're pushing this agenda whilst they're ignoring the obvious dangers to human health, as well as the environment and wildlife. Now, we know that electromagnetic frequencies are already dangerous. We know this. We know that there's thousands of studies from various doctors and scientists and others that prove that this is the case. And we know that the safety standards were set by governments and industry insiders back in the 80s who conveniently ignored any studies that didn't go along with the industry-backed studies. So right from the start, the health risks and environmental risks have been deliberately ignored. Now, the, they're creating a hype of uh, this 5G technology um, you know, it's just the, the next progression. We need it for better connectivity, faster speeds, yeah. or the, the introduction of the Internet of Things, AI and the driverless cars. But, uh, you know, the campaigns, what, uh, sorry, the research that I've myself and others have done um, have proven. So that's what I'd like to talk about in this interview. And I'd also like to mention um, that, this is in uh, conjunction with Real Change, which is a grassroots movement that's active in many, many areas around the UK. It's been growing for a couple of years now, um, the length and breadth of the UK, actually. And people are actively trying to endeavour to make a real change in their communities by organising and helping others, whether it's street kitchens or outreach or community discussions or meeting uh, meetings, 
And it was the idea of a guy called Jason, Jason Nota. So it's become a popular alternative to the money grabbing charities or the mainstream media bullshit. So I'm basically running the real change Hastings. Um, and we know that many areas are have been already started testing this um, technology with no public cons- consultation or notification. So, Annie, let, let me just stop you because this this is important. I, I've been looking into this a lot lately, but in advance of you coming on, out of respect for you, obviously, um, I was spending a bit of time on this today. Where they're testing it, they're not informing anybody. Nobody is being made aware that they're testing this. This is a big concern, right? That's absolutely true. Um, and there's a there is a guy who you probably would do well to get uh, on your show to speak to. Um, now he's from Gateshead, and he has been uh, looking into. I think there's thir- I think he said there's thirty one thousand um, phase arrayed lampposts that are being used at the moment in Gateshead and there's been absolutely no public consultation whatsoever. Just in Gateshead uh, alone, just in one city, 31,000 lampposts have been fixed with something that is phase, kicking out this um, 5G. That's right, yeah. Wow, um, and nobody knows about it. There's been no talk about it. The local media in Gateshead, nobody has a clue, any. No, and this guy, single-handedly, is... Um, uh, has made videos on YouTube to bring this to people's attention. Well, you know, we need we need thousands of people like like him. We need people to be checking, finding out what's going on within your own community because all our, all the communities are all working at different levels and different paces. At some parts, they're claiming that they've got test beds for this new technology. In other areas, they are actually just testing it without actually um, making the public aware about it. I know I did read that, I mean, there's a lot of information on my website. I can't remember it all because I've got like six months worth of research on the website that I've been doing over, you know, over the months. But there's been areas um, in London where they were testing uh, the 5G networks. And last October, some poor guy just burst into flames in the street. Hang on a second. I didn't. This is seriously. You're telling me that somebody spontaneously combusted. Yes, in uh, an area in London. I can't exactly remember the area which one it was now, but I'm sure people can look on my website or go and find that out. Just just by you know doing a. And Annie, this was reported, was it? I I think media did report this. I I do remember some story about somebody catching fire in um, in strange circumstances. Um, what leads you, I mean, terrible thing to have, what leads you to think, to assume that it might be related to this 5G experimentation? Right, because um, from the research that myself and others have done, we found out that this millimetre wave technology can actually heat up the body Um it's been used before uh, in in weapon systems. Um, it's been used by the Americans when they disperse crowds by firing this at them, which then you know burns them, so they yeah. disperse. So we know that this technology has got the capability to heat up the body. In fact, it can actually um, uh, boil your brain if they so wish. Put it that way. If it's if it's um, directed at you and it's powerful enough, we, we, somebody you'll know, of course, Barry Troer, the former uh, Navy weapons researcher, has been a, a friend of mine for for some years, and Barry's research coalesces, uh, aligns with yours, uh, and he 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 goes along with that. Yet we don't know for certain this man's um, experience of bursting into flames for certain that it had anything to do with this, but it's worth mentioning and it's worth um, looking into. Because I do remember this vaguely, that this was reported, but of course the media, you know, they're not going to look too deep into it. They're just going to put it down as some sort of anomaly. But it does, at certain levels, have the ability to heat the body, um, to, to do, not just to heat the brain, as you said, but also to manipulate the brain and alter the brain yeah. and the, and brain function. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, th- this goes back to, this is like 50-odd years um, 
that they've been using this same stuff. I mean, it goes back to what the Russians used it on the troops in the 70s to make them human weapons. The Americans used it, the technique in the 90s to make Iraqi soldiers surrender. Um, it, I mean, even just when they had the uh, Korean North, uh, sorry, the uh, Winter Olympics just uh, recently, they actually had reports in the paper stay saying they were they were utilizing the 5g technology and that they planned to use it on wild boars and they were going to use emit it by emitting uh rays and um and also using it to uh, frighten the wild boars by by emitting um roars from light from uh tigers and stuff like this so you know they openly admit that they can use this for these in these areas. So I think, you know, there's a lot. Obviously, I've only been studying this for like six months because before that, I was doing a lot of research on other things, the same as everybody else, like stage events and, you know, vaccines yeah, yeah. and chemtrails and all them sort of things. But I mean, obviously, you talk about people like Barry Trout. I mean, people really need to. He's been talking about this stuff for years. Decades, Annie, you're right. Decades. And I only came across them in 2012, um, uh, I think. And it horrified me to know that Barry was speaking on these issues, you know, saying what, what you're saying. For decades, he's been saying it and people haven't been listening to him. Or he's been prevented from speaking on you know national media or or local media this is the problem and that's obviously a question that our listeners will will have you know you of course as an activist you'll want to get this on the um you know you'll want to get this on the agenda on the political agenda do you, do you even try to do that annie or do you think it's not worth my while i'm not going to be listened to will politicians listen to this well i mean i try constantly most days i spend doing research on sharing stuff on my website or talking to people on facebook now as far as politicians concerned they're a lost cause anyway as far as i'm concerned um but i i think i think what we really really need to do is we really need to be um making the public aware because unless the public are actually aware of what this technology is and what it can do, then they're just going to accept, you know, the lies from politicians that it, there's nothing to worry about. It's not harmful. And it's just an upgrade. That's all it is. It's better connectivity, you know, and you'll have the Internet of things. It'll be great. You'll have faster broadband and all that. So the, it's the it's the public who we need to be um informing about the dangers of this i mean politicians once the public realize the dangers of this then they will be actively trying to stop this i'm sure of it there's many many groups throughout the the world who are trying to stop this at the moment well, you made a good point uh, annie you made a very good point earlier on the problem is when you hear about 5g technology i'll give you an example when i've heard mm. about it recently it's been, I've been listening to Sky News and at 10 minutes to the top of the hour, they have a business segment and the guy gets five minutes to talk about business. It's usually a guy called Ian King and he will say, you know, the, he will talk about 5G and technology and then he will talk about a great boost to the economy. It will bring jobs to certain cities and companies might relocate here because we're on the cutting edge of this technology, faster broadband speeds, like you said. So the reason the public doesn't know anything about it in terms of the human health effects of it is because it's being sold as a wonderful thing, jobs, 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 when in fact, as you pointed out earlier on, the people who want to roll this out haven't done any safety tests on this, but I know that independent academics have expressed very serious concerns about the problems that this will present for people and their health. So it's being sold as a great thing, Annie. That's what's happening. Yeah, and even the fact, even that fact where they're trying to say and state that it's going to be better connectivity and it will bring in um, finances and all the rest, even that is bullshit because 
there's industry insiders. There's a guy called Nick Hun, who's a, a consultant and a mobile data wireless expert. He states that more money should be spent on improving 4G. A much better network idea would be to pay that money with more stringent coverage requirements. And he states that large investments will not muster the significant new services that justify the expenditure and that broadband speeds of 100 MBPs to the home haven't generated any new applications. They've just increased the content that people stream. Um, he also st stated that the mobile connectivity, that we could do better without 5G and it would, would be a lot cheaper. And there's another critic who's Professor William Webb, who's the ex-director of Ofcom, Ofcom. And he's also come out and stated that 5G is no panacea of connectiv connectivity issues and that 4G could cover that. So there's not really is no clear or decisive reason for having 5G. This so, is a brilliant you know, point, Annie. This is a brilliant point. There is absolutely no reason for it. I have a phone that uses 4G and recently I've been in different parts of the country, Annie. No matter where I've been, if I've had to look at an email or if I've, if I've had to look at a video clip, because as a journalist I sometimes have to look at clips or listen to a bit of audio, I've been able to do it instantly with absolutely top speed with 4G. There is no need for this whatsoever. That's a very good point, that. And that, of course, leads people like you to wonder, well, if there's no need for it, obviously the big question is, why then? Why roll yes. it out if there's no need for it? Yes, exactly. And I think, uh, well, there's a there's a woman called Susan Clark who people would go do well to go and check out on um, YouTube. She's done extensive research on 5G and she, she states that there are 15 different lengths of waves, 10 are millimetre, and so can affect our skin, our cells, our DNA, our reproduction, and create and trigger diseases and death. Four are from two to four inches, and one is 20 inches, so that we can see that we are going to be covering all parts of the human body. Now, is the problem as well, is because the National Infrastructure Committee um, were supposedly asked to write a report for the government when it re really it's a new it's a new uh, committee they've only just they've only just put themselves together a, a couple of years ago and they're not any experts in the field whatsoever in fact i think one of them's in a think tank with tony blair and well anyway they wrote to the uh, government stating that because this because of the uh, short uh, millimeter waves which are pulsed um, they would need to put um, small cell towers some 100 to 300 meters everywhere that's everywhere everywhere you know everywhere you know so we already know the dangers of this EMF radiation from cell towers if people live nearby them there's clusters of cancers and there's all sorts of you know problems that are we are we're already facing from this um, radiation so for them to actually consider putting these small cell towers every two to three hundred meters is an is absolutely ridiculous you know we've got to address this um we've got to address the problem we've got to talk to people about what the issues are we've got to what what we're suggesting suggesting with the uh, real change movement is to promote this mass action campaign that will involve a leaflet campaign on street levels or people can just create their own levels. Now, I have created a leaflet that's downloadable on my website, so anyone can print that off. So we're asking people to change their um, icons on Facebook to uh, create a one that opposes 5G. So we hope to, people are going to start, start doing that on the 15th of March. Now, obviously, I've made this... We, sorry, me and Real Change have made this uh, mass action campaign to begin on the 15th, which will carry on for two weeks. But it's not going to carry on for two weeks. I'm hoping that it's going to carry on and on and on and on until we make some sense out of this. Because obviously Facebook only allow you to create events that last for two weeks. So that's why it, that's what it looks like on Facebook as a as a campaign. Now, so I'm trying to encourage, we're trying to encourage people to get involved in, in Real Change or create their own community groups 
um, to oppose 5G on a local level. We want people to find out what is going on in their own areas, what the councils are up to, what the agencies are intending to do, and we need to start making demands of them. Now, For answers, you, 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 need, you need people to start asking questions and demanding that they get the answers. Just before you go on, Annie, um, we've got plenty of time. We've got another 20 or so minutes to chat anyway. I just want to read a couple of tweets because there is a lot of interest in this. I just want to remind our listeners, by the way, as well, um, I've got the uh, activist and journalist uh, Anne-Marie Carey, Annie, live on the line. She's known as Annie Logical. Uh, she's known yeah. as Annie Logical. Um, um, we'll talk about YouTube as well before we... Um, before we uh, part company today. Um, she's talked just there about this mass action campaign. I've tweeted a link out to it and I've tweeted a link to her website as well. This is about 5G and the serious, well, no, the catastrophic consequences that this technology uh, is going to have for humanity. It really is this. This is no joke. It's getting zero media coverage outside of, outside of um, favourable coverage about the you know, the possibilities of jobs and all this sort of nonsense. But this is dangerous stuff. And I want to just read a couple of email, uh, uh, tweets there, a lot of tweets. Yeah. Keep them coming in. It's at Richie Allen Show. Uh, Jason tweets this. I had an email from my internet service provider the other day, Virgin Media, saying that they would be using my 5G Wi-Fi as a hotspot for the general public to use by default unless I opted out. The email looked so run-of-the-mill that I missed the connotation and almost deleted it before reading on. Imagine that. They were going to yeah. use his Wi-Fi as a hotspot to boost, presumably so that people, passers-by people, could use it by default unless he chose to opt out. Presumably they're sending these emails in a kind of a banal way, benign way, so that people maybe don't notice and will just say, fair enough, but he noticed. That yeah. probably doesn't surprise you, Annie. Yeah. No, I mean, the, what, the, the, the facilitators of this te technology, the, it's unbelievable. They've just, just recently, they've actually um, got the Church of England to agree to allow its churches and its farm buildings to be utilised with the infrastructure. Yeah. For 5G. That's now, right. these are the things that we need to be demanding and talking about and addressing uh, as soon as possible. The public need to start um, talking and 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 do, like you said, Richie, demanding that the if you're going to be pushing this dangerous technology and and putting the infrastructure in place, then you need to listen to what we've got to say about the dangers of it. And you need to be looking at studies and other reports that show the dangers of it because you're putting people's lives at risk, especially the children. Especially you young know, children. children. Especially children. And here's a question. This is the $64 million question. You, you and I, I think, share the concerns of Barry Troer in terms of what this is really meant to do. We know that it's got the ability to change people, to change their moods, to change the way they think, uh, to make people scared, to make people ill, to suggest to people that they do things that maybe they wouldn't ever consider doing. We know this is, ca is, is, is part of this technology. But you're obviously, I've been reading about you today, doing a bit of research, you're obviously smart, you're intelligent, you're going out there to the public, you probably can't get into that with people, can you? Or do you say, no, to hell with it, this is, this is the capability of this technology, we have to talk about who would want to use that against the human population. Or do you say, you know, you've got to lead people gently into the night. How do you go about explaining this to people? Um, well, as far as... It up to this point in time I've just been collecting all the all the research sharing it on my website and talking to people in other areas etc uh, so the, so this was all building up to this campaign because I, I mean I've worked on campaigns before I've been out on the streets and uh, when the score when the swine flu started I went out on the streets and gave people uh, leaflets and information about swine flu contacted local papers made them aware of the squalling the dangers of the vaccines and chemtrails you know I got involved when I when that when that was a subject that I was involved with I got involved with that I made sure that people knew about that I got a group together and we created the first chemtrail uh, commercial on Sky Television 
situation when the welfare reforms were affecting sick people and uh, disabled people. I went out there on the street and I stood outside the town hall for six months every Saturday and I just spoke to people. Now, it wasn't because I had any expectations that any of these dickheads in government were going to take any notice because they knew they weren't but I wanted to make the people aware of what was going on so that they could be more you know so they could understand the plight of other people which I did so as far as trying to make people aware of what's going on I've got many videos that I've created I've also got them on my website now and I think some of the most important ones are the fact that the CIA is at the helm of the 5G technology and the venture capitalist company called InQtel, which is owned by the CIA, that funds the many, many companies which make which many other analysts have called a true totalitarian nightmare because it can monitor people on man- massive scales. They fund companies that produce nanotechnology, embedded systems, microchips, wireless sensors, radio frequency IDs, software, hardware. And they brag about being able to monitor anyone anywhere. Now, they're using taxpayers' money in a classified budget that will be used to enslave humanity in the near future with tracking chips. All the stuff about the Internet of Things is basically more surveillance techniques. So people really need to realize that these people are they stand to profit from all this technology and they also are involved in the um you know the crackdown on people's liberties freedoms and the fact that they can use this technology to entrain your brain um your brain waves resonate at I think it's seven point something or other, but they're going to be interfered with. They can interfere with our immune system. They can create mental and physical bad health. They can actually put um, uh, thoughts in people's minds that's not their own. So this, this technology is dangerous on so many levels and obviously we've got that dual thing going on where we're trying to make people aware of it and the same people who are not aware that there is an agenda that these governments are it's very following. good it's very good annie you're trying to make people aware of it but you can't scare people off either because when you talk listen i i i believe what you're telling me it, it this comes from darpa the technological wing of the pentagon other very 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 deep state agencies that most people have never heard of it is about control it is about changing the 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 human body it is about merging us with technology it is about transhumanism it is about control but saying that to uh mr smith or mrs murphy who come to you and say oh how you doing love them i've not seen you here before what what's on those leaflets to try and get them to look yeah. at it, you've got to, you, you know, you've kind of got a box clever, and, and I really appreciate yeah. that. Um, Annie Carey, An, Annie Logical, of course, is 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 live on the line with me this evening. It's exactly four and a half minutes past the hour. Uh, Vigilay.org. I have tweeted out a link to it. It is on my Facebook page. Uh, this the, and I'll and I'll tweet it out again a few times, uh, Annie, and I'll, I'll try and get a link to. Um, it put onto um, my website as well. This is this is very important, folks. This um, mass action campaign uh, is very important because very very p- few people know anything about this, and they certainly don't know what this is capable of doing to people, and whose hands this will be in, and what they'll be able to do um, with this is absolutely vital. On getting the message out in censorship, Annie. Did you tell me, I've had so many conversations over the last two days, I don't have a producer, it's just me here, that uh, I think you told me your YouTube channel has been deleted or has been suspended, has it? Yes, yeah, it was terminated um, just a couple of weeks ago. I don't even know, the third strike that I got, I don't even know what it was for because they didn't bother to tell me. They just basically gave me a strike for um, a video that I created years, a couple of years ago. And then, and then uh, I'd already had a strike for one that I created, uh, so I was waiting for that three months to 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 be gone. But then, just before it was, they gave me a, another strike on another video, and then the third one, it was just that's it, you're gone, you know. And so I know it's it's a big it's a purge. They they are they are you know definitely clamping down on anybody on YouTube or Facebook who's trying to bring. Um, truth to people they don't they don't want people to 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 see these channels so 
yeah part of the 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 post that was one of the part of the reasons why my website my sorry my website was created because there was a guy called Steve and thank you Steve he he realized that I was going to be on the chopping block and he knew that my um you know my research and everything is going back I don't know five six seven eight years whatever he said it's important i will create a website for you because i'm not because i said on youtube i'm concentrating on the 5g technology now because it dawned on me how serious this is and how close it is to you know being enrolled and uh, sorry rolled out so that's why the website was created and that's where all the information all the research all the ta- Thousands and thousands of studies have been created on the dangers of EMF, and it's all there on the website. And I have created a leaflet, and I have used my brain. I haven't put on there all about, oh, you know, this is the agenda, and we're, you know, it, yeah, they're yeah. trying to lower the population and all that. I haven't put any of that on the leaflet. I've just put points on there that make the point, and people can actually turn around and go, actually, we don't need this. We can't afford this. We don't want the health risks. So hopefully, that is going to work. I think it will um, you of course you were involved with Edge Media uh, presumably on your YouTube channel presumably there was a lot of different information videos going back years Annie about uh, probably about a variety of subjects and topics that's what it was I mean the same as our uh, channel we, we started our channel in late 2014 it was pretty successful in terms of it had nearly 80,000 subscribers and millions and millions of views and we it's amazing listening to you because you said there couple of weeks ago, exactly the same time it happened to us. And uncanny in terms of the, the couple of our videos were, were, were from like 2015. And they said all of a sudden, interviews you did three years ago violated the community guidelines and they deleted our channel as well. And also told us we couldn't have another one, um, even though we have put another one up there. It kills me to do it. But you've touched on something very important. Maintaining your own website is vital. Because at least for the time being anyway, as long as you're putting your articles and you're putting links to documents and stuff like that on your website, it, it, at the moment, it's difficult for them to interfere with that. Um, you're, you're finding that out, of course, as, 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 I, am, as I am now, uh, Annie. What do you think? Um, what do you think? I mean, I've asked, I've asked people about smart meters and stuff. You know, I ask, I ask my neighbours. So you get a smart meter... They say, oh, yeah, yeah, there's one just been put in. And I say to them, did you ever look into the, the dangers of that, you know, to be surrounded by that, that EMF um, emitting frequency, that pulse and all that? And they just go, no. And I suppose I'm going to ask you a negative question. What do you think are your chances? What do you think our chances are of actually getting through to people? Look, this is deadly. It's dangerous. Forget about the agenda. It's dangerous. What are our chances, Annie? Well... <sighs> The, the thing is that there is the evidence is actually there you know the studies are there the evidence is there the problem is is that government agencies and lackeys in government um have not been forthcoming with um with information to to show that the that this is dangerous so if we can actually you know, if we can show people, point them in the direction for them to realise, well, hang on a minute, this is true, this has caused, you know, X amount of problems, um, we need to take this on board. I do, you know what, I really do believe that if people realise the dangers that this technology um, brings, I think they would be um, up in arms about it. I really, really do. I think the only reason why they're not is because no one takes the time you see, we're all in this um, predicament. A lot of people are um, having problems because they might have friends and family. And if they try and mention anything on that sort of level, they get sort of, you know, put down and don't talk stupid. And, you you know, you're paranoid and all this, that and the other. And a lot of people are facing that and they give up. They think, well, what's the point of trying to make people aware? Because my own family and friends won't even listen, you know. So I think if we work together... If we work together and we um, 
decide together. We 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 uh, have write it. We we write letters. We address the issues. We talk to these departments who are pushing this stuff. You know, we've got to actually all do something about it. We can't just all s- spend our time on social media and say, "Oh, there's nothing we can do," because that's exactly what they want. They want us to do that. They don't want us going out into the street. They don't want us being collective on a community level. They don't want us talking to people and saying, look at this study. This study proves that this technology is dangerous. Look at this. Look at that. They don't want that. And that's the only way that we can do something about this if we if we make the ordinary person in the street aware of the dangers, because at least that way, from there on, it's not just about a leaflet campaign. It's about making people aware. It's about creating local community groups. It's about taking it a step further, holding meetings, finding out who's who's doing what in our communities as far as pushing the technology goes and addressing them with the evidence, not just, you know, the people who don't know, but the actual people who are facilitating this technology. We need to fight back. We need to fight back. And I think it's time. That's why we started this um, campaign. We're hoping that we've got enough evidence now. It's been, you know, I've personally spent the last six months looking into it to gather all the information so that we can You know, we can talk to these people about it and we can push this and we can say you're not um, you're not going to be giving us this technology when we know it's harmful to our children, to pregnant women, to immune compromised people. Yeah, there's so much evidence that this is dangerous technology. And just because they're stay, say, staying silent about it doesn't mean that we have to. Absolutely right. Annie, just, just before you uh, you go, and again, folks, um, do uh, check out, find Anne-Marie Carey on Facebook, by the way. Um, if you look for Anne, A-N-N, Marie Carey, you, you only find Annie, you don't find anybody else. So find her on Facebook. There are links then to um, the, the campaign that she's been talking about. Um, I'm really impressed, um, Annie. Um, I'm connected to Jason Nota on Facebook. Um, uh, we connected on Facebook about four years ago. And I'm really impressed oh. by real change. Um, I mean, I really am I'm incredibly impressed by it and the things that it's doing. And I'm guessing that you probably noticed that a lot of people who get involved, whether it's in Leeds or other parts of the country, it probably kicks off something inside of people, you know, just doing stuff getting out, meeting people, getting out of the house, um, doing something nice for people maybe a bit less fortunate than yourselves, rough sleepers, homeless people. Um, these are brilliant yeah. initiatives. And from what I've seen over the last couple of years, that has grown and grown and grown and grown, that Real Change organisation, hasn't it? As you said, grassroots, um, you know, led by committed people, decent people who want to actually do something rather than sit around complaining about stuff. It, it looks brilliant to me, Annie. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really proud to be part of it, and uh, and uh, big shout out to Jason Noter and Donna Foley who work so hard to do what they do. You know, they do, they get they're involved in so much. So it's it's definitely something that people should look at um, joining. There's lots of different areas: Real Change Leeds, Real Change London, Liverpool, all islands, loads, and get involved and make a real change. Do something positive for other people. And of course, one of the um, one of the things that f- uh, Real Change is now going to be getting involved in is bringing 5G um, information to the public. And we're going to do that. by We're going to try and hold a seminar in Leeds uh, in the next couple of months. We're hoping that's going to go through where we'll be able to film it and make DVDs and pass that information on to people. So, yeah, so it's all happening, you know, and it's time that other people got involved. And, it, and you know, what have we got to lose at the end of the day? No, people should, pe- people should support it, Annie, and support people like you. Um, I'm, I'm glad to have met you. Thanks for that. Do um, come back and uh, stay in touch with with us, but do come back on the programme again in the near future. Whenever there is news, you've always got an outlet here. And um, regards to Donna, I am connected with Donna Foley on uh, Facebook as well. Uh, regards to her and to Jason and everybody else. And good luck with uh, this campaign, this um, action campaign over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'm sure it'll be a brilliant success. If everybody involved has half your energy and your enthusiasm, Annie, it's going to do okay. Thanks for coming on the programme. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. 
Thank you, Richie, and thanks to Fiona for getting in touch with you about Oh, Fiona, of course. Appreciate well, Fiona Weatherill, that's right, yeah. Thanks, Fiona. Cheers, Annie. Thanks a lot. Uh, that was um, Annie uh, and Marie Carey live on the line there. Do uh, go to vigile.org. I've tweeted a link to the website. I've put a link to it on the Facebook page as well and to the Facebook page for the campaign, which begins on Thursday. Again, I've put links out there as well. That's the uh, mass action campaign against 5G beginning on Thursday with a uh, real change are involved in this which uh, it's an organisation I think is really, really, really good. And I kind of think maybe we should have done more in terms of covering that. But um, like I said, I'm on my own here. I am dependent on listeners putting me in touch with people like that. But it's better late than ever. And I wish them all the best with this campaign as it kicks off on Thursday. Big shout out to everybody involved in that. 5G is deadly and has deadly implications for our health I'm convinced of it, and I wouldn't say it unless I was absolutely convinced of it. 